In this video, we will understand what are arrays in JavaScript and the basic operations that we can perform on an array. So an array is just a container in which we can store different types of data. For example, if I declare a variable and I name it first name, you will see that we are assigning it a value. But in a variable, at any given time, we can only store one type of data. It could be anything. For example, here we have stored John the string, right? We can of course mutate the value. We can say that now the first name is something else like Captain Jack. But still you see that we are only able to store one type of data inside this variable name, which is a string, right? But array is different. Array is a container in which we can store different types of data. So to create an array, you again declare a variable. So I can say let and uh, let's say that we are studying in a computer science class. So we want to store the data of that class into an array. So I can say class data and to build an array, you just use these brackets and inside these brackets, you pass different types of data, right? So let's pass a string. I will say the class name is computer science and then the next data should be passed by separating it with a comma. Now here you can pass a boolean. So let's say that is teacher available. I can say true teacher is available. So this is a string. This is a boolean and then again to pass another data you can separate it with a comma and let's say total number of students are 45. Now you can also pass an array inside an array. So again, I'm separating it with a comma and I'm passing an array and inside an array, I can simply say address and then comma and let's call it anything. Let's just give it hundred. Okay. And then now I can also pass an object to it. So the syntax for object is this curly braces and inside this I can pass a key value pair. So objects are always written in the form of key value pair and then they are called as property. So for more details on object watch this video. Okay. So here I'm just going to say anything. I can say number of girls colon let's call it 30 and then separate it with a comma and I can say number of boys colon how much it would be 30 45 so 15 right. 15. Now let me format it correctly so that it would look visually clean and so there you go. Okay. Now this is an entire set of an array. You see we have a string, we have a boolean, a number, an array itself and an object as well. Now to print the entire array you just do simple console.log you pass the class data variable to it. Class data and if I save this you see we get an array. So if you expand this you see the entire data. So we have computer science, true, 45, and then an array itself. You can expand it as well. And then again, you see address 100. And then you can expand this object as well, which is number of boys, 15, number of girls, 30. So number of boys, 15, and number of girls, 30. So this is an entire set of an array. Now, how do you access a data inside of an array? Simple we use the index position of it. So if I just quickly close this array or I, I will just, just refresh the browser, I'll expand the array. You see, we see this zero here. So this is the indexing position of the value stored inside of an array. So always remember that array are zero based, which means that the data that you store on them inside of them are always stored with the zero position. So the first data is always at the zero index. Then the second data is at the first index. Here you can see at zero index, we have computer science. At first index, we have true, second, 45 and third and array itself. So how do you access this data? Let's say that you want to access this 45 number of students. How would you access? Very simple. You just pass the indexing position right here. So you say class data and then you open this pair of brackets and just pass the indexing position. So let's count 0, 1, 2. So to access 45, you just write 2. Okay. So if you say 2, save this, you get the data 45, right? This is as simple as that. Let me duplicate this one so that we can print the entire array as well. So 2, save it, expand this, 
you see 45 now you can see that we have an array so how do you access this array so again you just can call the third index and you now get an array now how do you access data inside of an array which is inside of an array this is an array which is inside of this greater array how do you access that data so from here you just call like this class data index 3 which returns you an array and then on this array what do you want to access you want to access the address or the first index if you want to access the first index you just say 0 and you get the address so this is how you build a simple array now another way of building an array is by using the new keyword so again I'm just going to keep it simple I will say new array equals to new array and now here you pass these brackets and inside these brackets you pass the data here you have used the array symbol which is using a pair of brackets but here you are using the new keyword to create a new array so here I'm just going to pass uh, anything I'll say John I'll just keep it simple 23 true and this is a new array again I'm just going to say console.log new array save it you get the output now on array we have few methods for example if you want to check out the number of data inside of an array you can use the length method so on this class data array you can call this length so you can just say l-e-n-g-t-h length and if you don't call it like a function okay so just say length now length is a method now what is a method to know what is a method you need to watch this class on object okay so if I save this you get that we receive 5 so number of data that we have inside of an array is 5 so if you count you see 1 which is string 2 which is a boolean 3 is a number 4th is the array itself and 5 an object so number of data is 5 now always remember that this number of data is different than the way we access array it starts with zero index this is indexing but when we count the number of data then we always count from 1 2 3 4 5 okay so always remember this difference in mind now what happens when you try to access a data that is not available in the array or uh, for example in simple term I can say what happens when you try to access an index that is not available for example we just have only five data inside of an array but what if we try to call the tenth index so like this I'm trying to call the tenth index of class data we don't have 10 data types inside of this array so what it will return will be undefined so if I save you get undefined so when you try to call the index number that is invalid you will simply get undefined so this one is 0 this one is 1 this is true the array is the third and the object is the fourth and you are trying to access the tenth index so that's why you get undefined now you can also mutate the data inside of an array so for example let's say that you want to change the first index from computer science to something else you can do that you can say class data at zero index equals to a new data so here I can say programming class so programming in details class alright and so now this data will be updated so now if you try to access this array here not the length but the array itself you will see we get the data updated to programming in details previously it was computer science and now we mutated the array of zero index to programming in details and uh, if you want to change the true to false you can again call say let's say that class data of first index which is true is now false well not like this but false okay and now the data will change or update to false so this is called array mutation I'm just going to comment it because I just wanted to show you all right so now let's see that uh, some of the operations that we can perform on array so let's suppose you want to push something inside an array so to push something inside an array you can use the push method so you can say 
new array select the array name first and then on new array just call this method push now here you can pass the data let's say that uh, we want this object just pass this object here okay and now if you save you will see that this new array will have a new object so here you can see we have this new object again if you want to push something again for example this array just take this array and pass it inside this push method okay and now this array will have an array as well okay so you can see initially we just had these three values but now we pushed two values as well so this is push method now other than push we have pop as well so to delete an item from the array you call the pop method on the array so if i call new array dot pop and call it as a function now don't pass anything inside it just save it and you see that the last item was popped off so if i expand you see we do not see the array now if you call this pop again you will see that this object will also be deleted from inside of this array so if i save you see that the object is gone now if you call the pop again uh, what we have this true so this true will also be deleted so now we got rid of the true if you keep calling it until we do not have any data it will simply return you an empty array and again to push something inside an array you can call this one so just call new array dot push and now this array will have a new array inside it with two data so address and uh, 100 as the number so this is push and pop and other than this we have shift and unshift as well so what unshift does is if you call new array dot unshift if you read it says inserts new elements at the start of an array and returns the new length of the array so if you call unshift you can pass it a data i'll just say let's just give it a random number if you pass it 200 it will push 200 on the first item as the first item inside of the array so if you save you get 200 or the zeroth index and then the address is pushed to the second index if you again duplicate it and this time you just pass a new string i will say i am an shift method okay if i save this now i am unshift method is at zero index 200 is at one and then the array is pushed to the second index okay so this is how unshift works now just the opposite of unshift is shift so unshift pushes something on the beginning of the array so same way this new array dot uh, i'll say shift shift array dot shift and that's it and now if i save you'll see that the shift method removes the data from the top so if you hover over it you can read so removes the first element from an array and returns it now if the array is empty undefined is returned and the array is not modified okay so if you call it again now you'll see that 200 will be deleted because it is on the top of the array so there you go now if you repeat this again we will get an empty array so i hope you learned a lot about array in this video so yeah do make sure to like and subscribe the channel i will see you in the next one till then stay safe and happy coding